Hey there, how's it going? Z-Man the Tech here, and I want to thank you for tuning into Snow League Games. As always, I appreciate you very much. Today, I'm going to share with you my top 10 on-rails slash gallery shooter games on Nintendo Switch. Without much further ado, let's get it in. Number 10 on my list is Dead Z Meat, which is a gory gallery shooter where you shoot goofy looking zombies with comically large heads on a multi-level basis. As you progress, you earn gold that you can use to upgrade your weapons, and as you play through the various levels you'll unlock stronger weapons and explosives too. The levels do change up a bit from being the standard gallery to sniper levels where you'll be shooting from rooftops and you'll really have to work on accuracy due to having to reload more slowly and more often. Also, within levels are random power-ups that you can activate by shooting them, and they range from health gains to explosions that take out surrounding zombies. This is a single Joy-Con gyro-only controlled game, so keep that in mind. If you're interested in this game, it normally costs $9.99, however, it is on sale for $4.99 until March 21st. Number 9 on my list is a really wacky Wild West rail shooter called Mad Bullets, where you're having shootouts with desperados and American ninjas while fighting off vultures, evil piranhas, chickens, and more. You'll need to keep a sharp eye and mind your trigger finger because there are damsels in distress that need your help too. This game boasts three locations, 60 levels, three minigames, and roughly 200 missions all with fully destroyable environments in the mix. The enemies and characters are on painted wood cutouts that give them a neat little gallery shooter aesthetic, which I feel widens the audience of who could find this game enjoyable in the aspect of age ranges or folks that can't handle too much gore. The wood cutouts just fall apart when shot, which is tolerable. You're not actually shooting people or creatures for those that care about violence and such. If you're interested in this game, it sells for $14.99 and goes on sale often. Number 8 on my list is an addictive free-to-play shooter called Cover Fire. As the title suggests, you primarily take cover before shooting your enemies whether you're on the front lines with an assault rifle or you're sniping at a distance. You'll be fighting against your enemies using pistols, shotguns, rifles, grenades, and massive cannons all the while saving victims of war that are being held captive in each area. I really like the cinematic sequences where you're shown the inner mechanics of the gun that you're firing as the bullet passes through and exits the barrel and the camera follows it as it hits its target. There's a certain level of satisfaction with it that contributes to the addictive gameplay loop, giving you that reassurance that you followed through with completing the mission in the intended way that you're expected to. Now, it being a free-to-play, there are of course optional microtransactions that present themselves a good bit into the campaign, however, if you're playing casually and with a good amount of patience, you'll enjoy your time with this most definitely. Like many other games in this genre, there are paywalls that can speed up the wait time that the game enforces upon you, but again, these are completely optional. I usually take those opportunities to check out the other modes that the game has to offer, like the zombie survival events which provide a pretty decent level of challenge and are relatively fun too. It's important to note that the aiming in this game is via the right analog stick and not gyro, so keep that in mind. If you're interested, this game is free to play so the barrier of entry is little to none at all. Give it a try and see if you like it. Number 7 on my list is Sniper Hunter Scope, which is another addictive shooter here on the Switch where you primarily use sniper rifles, though there are occasional levels where you use pistols and assault rifles while playing in mild cover style mechanics. The control options are pretty flexible where you can play with analog aiming or by using gyro with left or right Joy-Con. As you play, you'll unlock more and more weapons that you can acquire by using in-game currency. You'll be shooting enemy soldiers, drones, and the like while using your primary weapon or in some cases vacant machine gun turrets that you'll have to manage when it comes to their temperature. There's a nice little risk and reward mechanic with the reloading where if you tap the button a second time within a certain threshold, you achieve a perfect reload and can get back to shooting more quickly. However, if you do it outside of that window, it takes longer to reload and you may take damage from enemy fire. And of course, if you just tap the reload button once and let it follow through on its own, then it's the standard reload time. This is very much an arcade-like experience spanning 15 or more stages with the ability to unlock 30 or more weapons and gallery items, and you'll have about 60 achievements to tackle if you so choose. There's also some optional DLC if you're looking to expand on this experience a little more. If you're interested, this game sells for $14.99, and it goes on sale for a lot less quite often, so keep an eye out. Number 6 on my list is Western 1849 Reloaded, which is an interesting gallery shooter where you have the ability to change position and take cover in numerous spots around the area, which is super useful and integral to the way the game plays because enemies come at you from multiple angles. 
When playing with gyro, you move positions with the left analog, peek from cover and ready your shot by holding the left trigger, and fire with the right trigger. You can also reload with the left or right shoulder button. Speaking of which, this game has a similar risk and reward reload system as the previous game I just mentioned. In fact, it's pretty much identical, so there's no need to reiterate. For those interested, there are handheld mode button controls if you choose not to play with gyro. Sometimes, you'll need to toss explosives onto balconies to take out certain enemies too, so you'll need to get strategic when it comes to how you dispatch them. Some of them refuse to peek out of cover enough for you to shoot them, and when I said they come from all angles, I mean they really do. So yeah, just keep that in mind. One of the nice mechanics that set this title apart from the rest is that you're presented with a few perk options after each wave. One of them allows you to have unlimited shots so you don't have to reload for the next wave. One of them allows you to drain health from enemies as you shoot them down. And there's another that gives you a dynamite that kills all enemies on screen, which is good when you're in a pinch, just to name a few. From the main menu, you have the ability to upgrade your weapons and gear with in-game currency that you earn while playing, so make sure you do that between play sessions to increase the amount of damage you can give and take. If you're interested in picking this one up, you can get it for just $7.99, which I feel is pretty fair for an arcade shooter with this level of quality. Number 5 on my list is an on-rails shooter that's heavily inspired by Star Fox called Fur Squadron. It has a smooth and quick gameplay with six levels full of various enemy types and an intuitive boss fight at the end of each one. It has an awesome retro wave aesthetic all throughout, accompanied by a synthesizer soundtrack to match. This game, of course being a bite-sized rail shooter intended for multiple playthroughs, has three levels of difficulty and the ability of piloting a variety of ships. The game is narrative driven, though like its inspiration is not voiced in English, but in the language of the fictional characters, so it's a tad bit difficult to keep up with the dialogue while playing a game with so much action. There are certain segments where you do have time to read it when there's not so much going on, but while playing, not so much. For folks that are watching you play, it's probably not as much of an issue. My only gripe with the game is that the reticle is too loose and sensitive, which makes targeting enemies somewhat of a challenge in comparison to its inspiration. The game overall is still very much playable and enjoyable though. If you're interested in picking this one up, you can get it for $6.99. Number 4 on my list is another on-rail shooter that loosely draws inspiration from games like Star Fox and maybe even Star Wars a little bit. It's called Star Horizon, and interestingly enough, it seems to have been pulled from the eShop, so if you haven't downloaded it at this point, it is what it is. I believe I got it a while back during one of the No Gravity Games promotions where they were allowing free downloads of certain games if you did it in order. Anywho, the game itself is rather generic when it comes to the voice acting and dialogue in general, but it's nice to have nonetheless. Story throughout the campaign is always a plus when it comes to having a motivation and reason to do what it is you're doing. This one truly does propel you on a guided path, as an on-rail shooter should, though it does give you some opportunities to choose your path here and there. What I like most about this one is the cinematic direction it takes during the flight pass while you play. It's a relatively decent looking game with a favorable art design for the subject matter. As you play through, you gain in-game currency that you can use to upgrade your weapons and ships too. Another thing I'd like to mention is the mild auto-targeting that's put into place here. Pretty much anything within your large reticle will automatically be targeted and you can either hold your laser button, fire your swarm shot, or launch a torpedo and have a nearly guaranteed hit. Though the game seems to have been removed from the Nintendo eShop, it is still available on Steam for $9.99 if you're interested. Number 3 on my list is Assault Chain Guns KM, which is an intense on-rail shooter made very much in the likeness of LA Machine Guns and Gunblade NYC. They captured the magic that the inspirations had so well that you'd swear that they were in the same universe. This game is an absolute thrill ride compared to other games in the genre. The speed in which you're flown through the city and the amount of action that you see on screen can be overwhelming at times, but definitely doable. You have the options of playing with gyro controls, analog, or the touchscreen while in handheld mode of course. Arcade mode is the main mode that consists of 6 brutal stages that you play through in order. There is also a score attack mode where you can select the stage of your choice and try to get the highest score while defeating enemies to increase the time limit. You can play with up to 4 players locally in this one, and it gets wild keeping track of who's shooting what, but super fun nonetheless. There's not much story in this one if any at all, just jump in and go for it, like a true arcade experience should be. If you're interested in picking this one up, it will only set you back about $9.99. This one is a blast, and I highly recommend it. 
Number two on my list is a remake of the infamous 1997 classic, which needs no introduction, the House of the Dead remake. Am I a little biased with this choice? Hell yeah. But the level of quality and attention to detail here can't go unnoticed. This is for the most part a one for one remake of the original and they nailed it. True to the original gameplay just like you remember but with a fresh coat of paint visually, which was much needed because well, you see we've come a long way since 1997 when it comes to visuals and video games. I'm just saying. Not knocking the original, as I'll always go back and play that one, but it's nice to see this one get some much needed TLC. Enemies still get shredded by your shots to the point where body parts and random pieces of meat go flying, and the blood animations are sick. You can still tackle this one in local two-player co-op or competitive play when it comes to score chasing. They also added a horde mode which ramps up the difficulty and really puts your skills to the test. You've got multiple endings, an added photo mode, built-in achievements, an armory with unlockable weapons, and a gallery with all the enemies and bosses that you encounter. This one can be played with analog controls, gyro, or a bit of both. The normal price for this game is $24.99, however it's currently only $6.24 at 75% off until March 28th. That my friends is a steal, scoop it up if you can, now's the time. And now, the number one game on my list, another remake, this time of a game from 1995, Panzer Dragoon Remake. Am I biased with this one too? Of course. This is yet again another very well done one to one remake where they stayed true to the original but improved the graphics and controls and made it more suitable for modern gamers. Just like this developer's work with the House of the Dead remake, when I tell you it's a night and day difference when it comes to the visuals in comparison to the originals, I mean it, quite literally. This game is beautiful. And for a short period of time, when it was a timed exclusive, you could only play it on Switch. I was even more proud to have one back then. Of course, that time has passed and it's on all other major consoles including PC. And I may or may not own it on each one. I don't know, it's just that good. Now, does it look better on everything else? Of course. But outside the Switch, the only other way to play on the go is with the Steam Deck, so keep that in mind. Another important thing to note is that on launch there was a little bit of an issue with the controls when it came to painting the targets per se, along with the lack of 60 FPS. However, that issue was addressed in a patch shortly after, and it's been phenomenal ever since. The 30 FPS thing never really bothered me because the original ran at about 20, but to each his own. The 360 degree controls and unique lock-on targeting system make this one such a fun experience, and the stunning update to the visuals while keeping true to the gameplay we remember really helps push this one to the top of the list for me. Here's the thing, if you haven't picked this one up yet, now's a great time because it's only 374 at 85% off until March 28th as well. That's about the cost of a cup of coffee. It's a no-brainer for me, I highly recommend it. And that's going to do it for my top 10 on rail slash gallery shooters video for today, everyone. Thanks for hanging out and watching it. I truly appreciate your time and support. It means the world to me. Did any of your games make my list? Did I miss any that you think should have made it? Maybe some honorable mentions? Let me know in the comments and let's chat about it. I also have a Discord server if you'd like to join, keep in touch, or the like. The link is in the description. If you like what you saw, make sure to like comment, and consider subscribing for more content like this. Have a good one. Take care. Futuristic classic. The futuristic classic. Time is of the essence. I feel like I got it mastered. Futuristic classic. The futuristic classic. It's always moving forward, so I'm never moving backwards.